is former assistant U.S. attorney David Weinstein. And David, you've read the memo. We have it here printed out. Everyone was wondering if it was going to come. A lot of people thought it would. As the former chief of the U.S. Attorney's Office of Miami's National Security and Public Corruption Sen uh, Section, that's a long title, what do you make of the argument that the disclosures um, are going to compromise the national security investigation tactics of our government? That's the one thing we all thought might happen. That's the one thing we were all most concerned about. And you know what? It doesn't do anything to compromise that. The information in here about how national security investigations are conducted, it was no secret as it was revealed in here. There is a secret surveillance court. You have to present probable cause to that court. And if you're looking at an American citizen, you have to renew it and have probable cause each time you look at that citizen. So nothing's been compromised. So that's a bullet that we all dodged on that end. All right, I have a copy of the memo right here. It, it says, unclassified, and this is from the Republican staff members of the Intelligence Committee, and you're saying that this is more like something an attorney would write as a motion to a judge. Explain that. Well, Elliot, if I was representing the target of this investigation, the president, this is the kind of motion I would file with the court, and I would say, Your Honor, they obtain classified information, they listen to an American citizen, but you know what? the way they went about it is wrong and here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to discredit the source of the information. I'm going to say that law enforcement withheld information from the judge so the judge didn't have a big picture. I'm going to say that they downplayed certain information and left out other facts which may have influenced the judge to make a decision on this. But that's only half the story. We're talking about one witness. We're talking about facts that aren't necessarily corroborated by what they're saying here. It may show bias. It may not show bias. The fact that this witness was suspended and later terminated, well, if he wasn't suspended or terminated at the time of writing the warrant, then the agent's got no obligation to do this. But these are the things that you do when you're defending a target or defending someone who's been named in an indictment. So is this a successful tactic? Do you think they've succeeded in doing this? And what impact is this going to have on Mueller's investigation? The only impact it's going to have on Mueller's investigation is that he is going to now take more time. If everybody wants the full picture to be out there, then he will present the full picture. He'll talk to more witnesses. He'll present a lot more information. If they thought this was going to put an end to it, it's not. He's not concerned in just one end of this. He's concerned in making sure that justice prevails and the people in the grand jury have enough information, if necessary, to return an indictment. So this is far from over. The people who are most hurt by this are the rank-and-file FBI agents. The people who are out there doing this work, who now the Republicans have said were hiding things, weren't doing their job, that has to hurt them when they're out there every day doing their job to defend the rest of us. Well, a lot of people are arguing that that may be the entire reason why this was uh, released. But we're going to talk to you more about this at 6 o'clock. David Weinstein, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you, David. Right, Good thanks to see a lot. you. And you can read the entire four-page letter for yourself as it was released today. We've posted it on our website. The best way to do it is to read it for yourself. It's right there at CBS Miami. Dot com. And look for much more on the decision to release the controversial memo tonight on the CBS Evening News with Jeff Glor. That's at 6.30 after CBS 4 News at 6.